Hi there, my name is Lauren. I'm an interpreter here at Royal Botanical Gardens, and these are my house plants. One of my favorite house plants is jade, which is sometimes known as a money plant, a money tree, or a lucky plant. Jade is one of the most common house plants worldwide, which also means that there's a lot of common mistakes that people will make while taking care of their jade. So today I'm joined by Chris Tarrant, RBG's manager of plant propagation and production, to give you some tips on how to take care of your jade at home. Hi, I'm Chris Tarrant, Plant Production uh, Manager at RBG. So here we're going to talk about the container size and what containers to use for jades. The most common, most practical and the most efficient are clay pots. They breathe and they allow uh, air and water to travel uh, between the pot and the root ball. But one of the common problems with people and jade plants is that they oversize the pot that they planted into. Jade like to have their root balls contained and small, and something this particular jade that we see here will sustain itself in this plant, this pot here, probably for another 10, 15, 20 years. The general rule of thumb for watering a crassula is to wait for it to thoroughly dry out. And you can typically see that with the root ball, where it goes very pale brown. But also, the plant itself will lose a sheen on the leaves. The plant overall is not suffering, and the roots are not going to die because it doesn't have any water. But now's the time for us to fully saturate this, allow for free drainage, and then put it back on the bench and don't worry about watering it for another two to four weeks. It will, but one of the comforting things with the jade is it takes about two to three months to kill it. So if you tend to overwater, uh, what will happen is you will see the bumps on the leaves. Uh, that is edema, and that typically occurs when a plant is given excessive water for long periods of time. And you'll see a blistering on the upper and lower surface of the leaf. Also, I'd like to take the opportunity to tell you, show you at this time about propagating a jade. This leaf just fell off the plant, and we just left it there, and it has thrown a new shoot and actually has rooted into the soil. So all you have to do is pull a leaf off, throw it on the top of the soil, let it callus over, so let the tip of where it broke, you broke it off from the plant dry, and then apply water to the top of the root ball, and then just leave it on the surface. So to get the jade into bloom, you have to simulate where it comes from in its natural habitat. Uh, as you can see, this one has uh, completed its flowering cycle. And to get it to flower, you have to give it two to three months of low temperatures. So around about 12 to 15 degrees Celsius, and you'll start to see buds after about eight weeks, and then the flowering cycle will begin. Typically, the most common reason people do not get their jade to flower is that they keep it inside their house over the winter time, but they keep it in a sunny window, house around 20, 22 degrees. You'll have a lovely vegetative jade, but you will not get flowers. So it has to go through this cold treatment of around two to three months, between 12 and 15 degrees Celsius. So here we have two jades. They're in the same greenhouse as the ones we just showed you pictures of that are in bloom. However, these are not in bloom. So the reason for this is that these have been pruned during the summer or late summer, early fall. In other words, we've cut off the, the plant's ability to produce flower buds. So now it's, what it's doing is growing more shoots vegetatively. This one here is as tall as we probably want to get it, but you can see wherever we've pinched it, instead of getting a single shoot, which is this one right here, we now have two shoots coming out. So we've doubled the plant's foliage canopy. Now it's rather tall. The one plant to our right, the next one here, this one is a, is a three or four plants in this pot, but they've been pinched far more frequently, so we have this more bushy, compact plant that next year will produce twice as many blooms. So if you want your jade to flower and you want your jade to be compact, you need to prune after it flowers. The jade typically flowers January, February, March, depending on the temperature regimes that you've given it. So the end of March, that's when you prune your jade you'll get new vegetative growth throughout the following, throughout that summer. And then in the fall, you bring it into the cool, cool it down, you'll have flower buds again for January of the following year. When pruning, you can do it in two different ways, depending on how harsh you want to get it. This one is an extra that we've got out the back. So when you do tip pruning, 
you just take off the tip. Just like that. However, if it's a tall plant and very floppy like this, you may want to consider cutting down into the main stem and taking the whole thing off. And I cut it there because there's evidence of a new shoot that's immediately wanting to grow right here. Now that's pretty drastic, but you can cut into stems as strong as this, and it will eventually come back out from there. But once you cut a major limb like this off, you don't want to water it for a long, long time. Enjoy and happy growing. Thank you, Chris, for sharing with us some tips on how to take care of our jade at home. If you're looking for more plant care videos, please join us at RBG at home. Or if you have an idea for another plant that we should feature next, please leave us a comment. Thank you so much for watching and we hope to see you around at Royal Botanical Gardens.